So I've had some questions from people on the video that I did and asked me to write down a few things. So here we are back in the perfect old style kind of industrial workout space. Um, nothing fancy, no bright lights or uh, smoothies at the bar. So let's take a look at stance first. And we're gonna work fundamentally from a boxing space that can be used for kicking, punching, um, etc. I was taught to box, I told you by Frank Squarso Jr. and Bob Olson. And Frank, who best martial arts nobody's ever heard of for lots of reasons, including his day job, um, put together some really effective punching, kicking combinations a long time ago. MMA is just catching up this last few years and still isn't as good as what Frank put together in the 70s. So what we're gonna do first is take a look at fundamental relationships if you're gonna use boxing for MMA or even if you're gonna use it for street stuff, okay? so. First of all is your stance. So feet are a little more than shoulder width apart comfortably. Okay. <clears throat> feet are turned to whatever side if I'm fighting right-handed, they're going to be turned off. Back foot's gonna point a little bit more forward than the front foot, but they're gonna be turned off to my right. If I'm southpaw, well then it's just gonna be the opposite. Slightly open stance, but not too much. Definitely not in a line like this, and definitely a lot like this, okay? Now, there's lots of reasons for that. Um, your relationship with the person that you're, you're fighting is one of those big reasons. So take a look at a few things. As I square it more, I both make the target bigger, and I shorten my reach. As I drop into a stance like this, I make my front arm longer and my target smaller, okay? So, something to think about there when you're doing this. It also allows me to use shoulder rolling and stuff. Shoulder rolling when you're, is, is much more difficult to do like this. Again, you're making the target bigger, you're depending upon a defensive posture. That's not a great idea in boxing, but you can get away with it because people can't kick you, they can't do other things, um, and you've got big gloves to protect yourself. Once you get out on the street, or you're using really small gloves, that's not the case anymore. Okay? People can do all kinds of things, okay? and when you put your hands up, you find that there's not a lot of cover. 16, 18 ounce sparring gloves you know, are big protective things when people can only do certain kinds of things. It's not so once you lose them. So as you get the stance, okay, relax. Put your elbow right over your liver and bring your hand up in a line between you and your opponent, okay? Keep it here, okay? The most difficult thing to block if the guy has a decent jab is gonna be the jab, so put something here, okay? Make him work for it. Holding it out here and expecting you to move it, okay, means that if he thins and fakes or he's quick enough, you're probably gonna get hit with the jab before you can move, and it makes it really easy to start faking you and having you start to move your hand and then have the person either jab around it, kind of a front cross around it, or hook around that, okay? And we're not gonna be doing this anyway, okay? We're gonna be moving things like our head, so put this here. Bring your shoulder relaxed in. Everything's very relaxed. Bring your shoulder, your head, your chin, kind of all in like this, okay? Kind of in like this. So that when I punch and when I'm moving like this, he has to find places. I'm not sitting here, elbows out, right, and all this and giving him wide open shots. I'm making it difficult. Make it difficult for uppercuts, make it difficult for front kicks, make it difficult for flying knees, okay? So think about your posture and how and why you're gonna gonna hold it, okay? This hands down for lots of reasons, okay? 
we talked before about jabbing from down here can make it difficult, especially if guys get caught looking at your eyes or your face. We don't do that, but most people tend to do that. They're taught to look at the guy's eyes and tell you. Not a fan, okay? So what this allows also is protection for my body. When people are pushing, punching to the body, it allows me easily to block kicks and you have to block the kicks. Don't do what MMA guys do and pull, you know, this is a Muay Thai, you can't kick here, it's illegal. So what do you do? You leave yourself open to be kicked there because you're not reflexively stopping stuff from down there. Not a smart deal if you're gonna use this for personal defense or anything else. You can see what a hard kick, even to the cup, can do to people. Just remember, you're not wearing a cup on the street, okay? So you're gonna to have to be able to do this, okay? It also means that if people come in for little takedowns and things, it's real easy to underhook an arm. Underhook an arm turns spin, okay? Don't let them get down on your legs like that. We don't wanna be down on the ground on the street, and you definitely don't wanna be picked up, elevated, and dropped on the street. I can tell you from personal experience, doing it to people, that's usually the end of the fight, okay? Long time ago when I did a lot of stupid stuff, okay? So, and I'm telling you this as somebody who wrestled. And I was a tall guy, people were constantly going down on my legs. Okay, I was tall for my weight class, so people were constantly going down on my legs, okay? And being able to underhook and do things like that is a really valuable thing, plus block. Plus now, when you take a look at, okay, how much does this cover? People punch, kick, everything else, or take down, and what does this do in the process? Flying knees, front kicks, uppercuts, so you can see that your basic posture and how you're going to use your arms uh, and your body relationship matters a lot. Okay, so spend time with this. Okay, spend time. How am I going to how am I going to do this?